I'm a little embarrassed by the fact that I know so little about... Oh, I'm numerically dyslexic, so I'm going to say math by default. Mm. It's not that I know little. It's like I physically have a learning disability, so I cannot do numbers, and it is embarrassing. Like, I go to the restaurant, and they're like, how many for your table? And I'm like, oh, man. At the oh. restaurant? I got fired from every job that I worked at, like, some type of cash register or dealing with, or like dealing with tips, because I would always give them the wrong money back. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, are you stealing? And I was like, absolutely not running cameras back, but I was just giving people too much fucking change back. Wow. I wish it was my cash year. Oh, bro. <laughs> What's up, guys? It's Kehlani. My new album, Crash, is out everywhere now. What's up, Nyla? We need to talk. What's going on, guys? Nyla Simone here with another episode of We Need to Talk. And today I got a very special guest in the building. We got Baylani, I mean, Kalani in the building. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so happy to have you on the show. I was just telling David that I've been a fan of you for so long. I think Cloud19 dropped when I was in college. So I feel like we came of age together. I yeah, came of age to your music. Nice, nice. Yeah. And also, we... Um, my best friend Sean told me, make sure you mention this, but when you were on tour, dang, I think it was your first tour. I went to it in Amsterdam. It was okay. my first time getting high, <laughs> my first time seeing you live. So I just have so many memories to you and your music, so it was really nice to actually Oh, I love to that. You. Nice. Yeah. I'm happy to be here. Of course. Okay, so let's get into it. Crash is out now, um, and I just want to start with why Crash? Why the name? Um, you know, the definition of a crash, and don't quote me because I don't mean like Webster definition, but a crash is the highest moment of whatever, like it's the impact. It's not like the thinking about it before and it's not like the remembering it after. It's like whatever is happening, it's, if it's a wave crashing, if it's a car crash, if it's crashing a website, whatever it is, it's like that peak, like emotion. And it's just this moment where you're like, can I cuss on here? Yeah, yeah. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> so... <laughs> so to me, I knew, based on how everything was starting to sound, that it was going to be something that, to the to the listener at first, was very what the fuck. And didn't exactly make sense until they took a second with it, so. I can see that. Was this, <laughs> was this and I, I guess you mean sonically, Sonically, right? yeah, 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 yeah. It is. Lyrically, it sounds like me. Definitely. And yeah. that's what I was telling my friend. I was like, it's very international, but it's still very k -Lodge. Yeah, like, for sure. <laughs> I'm going to always talk a little bit of shit. Yeah. But was it based on a real night in Vegas or a real weekend in Vegas? No, I, I go to Vegas so often, but I also kind of have like this, like not to be head ass, but like this internal Vegas that's always kind of like this fine line of like fun and like high spirited, like adrenaline thing that happens in my life throughout you know, in between being a mom and also having a career and like yeah. things like that, this like finding this like wild kind of like through line that happens that to me crash it on a on a storyboarded sense is this like wild trip to Vegas that ends in this sobering thought of like, okay, reality setting in and like this is what it really feels like at the end of it. But yeah, I feel like it just represents me in this like um in, in this elusive storyboarded kind of way. But no, it's not It's not a detailed actual trip that I actually took. But okay. I'm there way too fucking often, so it's kind of like an accumulation maybe. Okay, because it does sound <laughs> like it. I'm like, damn, she had a fucking time. And the oh, way you I have it, a time every time. <laughs> I can see I can see that only because, yo, I've seen your parties, I've seen your, your album signings. Like, Oh, it's turn. It's madness. It's turn. It's crazy. How does it feel? You're not, you're not new to this, so it's not like yeah. you're not used to it, but... Mm -hmm. Does it get old? No, it doesn't. I think because I, I, I don't have expectations. Like, I don't I don't ever wake up and I'm like, it's going to be like this and it's going to be like this and I have to knock this and this and this out. I really walk with the, just I'm grateful for whatever comes my way, especially because we're in a time where, I'm only 29, so I, we're in a time where, like, those are very fast careers. They're these, like, you get a song, you crack it off on TikTok and it happens. Or yeah. there's people I came out with at the same time as that, don't exist anymore like the the career has completely you know dissipated so for me to be in a place where somehow miraculously it grows every year is really special to me i didn't expect this signing in new york to go the way that it went i was like all right but like <laughs> it probably was at its peak maybe it was good until it wasn't but now we're here at crash and like that was the craziest shit i ever experienced so yeah what what do you think it is like why do you think you have that longevity? I have my idea, but why, <laughs> why do you think it is? 
I think I've just been honest. I don't know. I don't think I've ever, like, I, I pay special attention to my fans. I think I've cultivated them in a way where they really do feel like the epicenter of my career, which they are. It's not this, like, numbers ploy or this, like, hyper-mysterious, I'm trying to feed you a package. I think they care about me in a special way that, like, I'm very fortunate and very blessed to have that like support system like they care well beyond the music they care if my mental health is going well they care about my daughter they yeah. care about my family like they care in a real way yeah i think like i guess what's like special and unique to like you and your fans is that like i said earlier like we grew up watching you we grew up with you so i think i think you know i don't know i feel like when and the reason why i think you're lasting longer than other people is because you just stay true to you because even like you. when you started getting mainstream and you signed to atlantic i was so nervous because i'm like oh <laughs> she's about to you know uh -huh, like she's about changed. to go mainstream mm -hmm. so i was i was like low-key disappointed but then i yeah. heard the project and i'm like oh no i love it here yeah we're rocking yeah, 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 yeah. they let me do me for real yeah and we've had God. some moments where there's been like a, let's put out this song and then i go you know i have the one i really want to drop and then they're like all right we hear you so Bless them. Yo, it's important because <laughs> I was so nervous, but it's it's been great. But I think that actually makes a world of a difference. Thank and just you. being able to maintain that connection with your music. Thank you. Um, but that being said, um, yeah, I was nervous when you signed, but you, you kept your authenticity. And then even fast forward to this project, my favorite one on here so far, I feel like it always changes, but <laughs> right now it's deep. Yes. Yeah. I Good love because I love the story. Like yeah. it's so true. We've seen it, and it's just I think it's also relatable to anybody who's just grinding mm -hmm. and like building. But for you, when you were making deep, what what were you thinking, or like what triggered that storytelling? You know, I'm gonna give a lot of credit to the person I made it with, Bibi Borelli. She's mm -hmm. a genius. Like I feel like her level of like don't give a fuck, and her level of like. We have, we just have really similar stories. We come from really similar backgrounds, completely different sides of the world, but really similar backgrounds. And she she knows my story, so it was really cool to be able to like create that with her. But to be able to say like just know when you see me thriving, like when you see me outside, when you see me looking the way I look, uh, presenting myself the way I present, just know all that it took to get here. This shit is really deep for real. I really <laughs> like it. Really is, and also like. My the 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 crowd vocal screaming in the background is my sister and my goddaughter, like and my daughter's on the song, you know, ad libbing at the end. But it was just special because it's it's. I don't think I think I made a, make a lot of love songs. I think I make a lot of songs reflecting you know relationships and you know things in the heart space. But it's not often I've got to just be like, actually, y'all, let's take a second to remember like my life has been crazy and it took a lot to get here and I'm grateful. So I'm glad we have that one and I'm really excited to sing that on tour. Yeah. I think it's going to be ridiculous. Hell yeah. yeah. Sleeping on floors. To, I yeah. was like, damn, yeah, she really, she really did that shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a true story. <laughs> it's a true story. How does it, well, speaking of tour, what is the plan? Because I've seen you... I've seen you several times, actually. I've seen you at that time in Amsterdam, then I saw you at PlayStation Theater, mm -hmm. I think, for the um, Sexy Savage, mm -hmm. right? That was Sexy mm -hmm. Savage, yeah. I've seen you several times. It's a lot that goes into it. I mm -hmm. feel like a lot of people don't even take no the idea. time to yeah, do choral, to stage design, et cetera. Mm -hmm. What are we giving for this? Because it's so international. It's like, yeah. how do you even take a stab at that? Man, honestly, I'm going to do it the same way I made the music. I'm going to just also have that many different genres of fun on tour. Like, I want to dance. I want to play guitar. I want to stage dive. I want to headbang. I want to have vulnerable <laughs> moments where I get to yeah. talk to everybody. I want to bring somebody on stage. Like, I want to do it all. I think, like, I'm at the point where, like, seven projects in, this isn't, like, a, I have to prove myself. Yeah. Or I have to, like kind of force grab any kind of fan base like the obviously the wish and the hope is that you know more people become welcomed in as the time goes on but I'm really just here to have a blast with everybody who already loves me and I'm here to have like the most fun with myself and the most fun with my friends and I've given a lot during my career to just like succumbing to what was asked of me to just be like let me show up and like they're expecting this for me and they're expecting this but I'm really in a position right now where I'm like I just want to do what, what the fuck makes me happy and what's the most fun. And I think that's why this album came out the way it did. And it's why the tour is going to be so fun because I'm. it's just going to be as much all over the place and just as chaotic <laughs> as the album. So, yeah. I love that. And I, to circle back to deep, I really fuck with the fact that you're saying it is that deep. And I saw, like, 
I think you posted this a few months ago. Like, I'm when you see me, fresh skin, freckles, whatever. Like, mm -hmm. I'm the healthiest and the happiest I've mm -hmm. ever been. Yo, your fitness journey has been <laughs> insane. Thank you. Talk to me about that. And, like, I guess what was the turning point where you were like, let me buckle down? Because you've already been, like, fit. But then I feel like maybe, like, four years ago, you just kind of got, like. I got buff. I'm yeah. a little buff under here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think when it became mental for me, mm. when it became, like, this is for my sanity, this is for my routine, this is for my, like, I don't get a lot of alone time. I'm a mom as well as, like, I live very communally. Like, I live with all my friends. All my friends live with me. Everybody takes turns living with me. Like, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My two my two best friends live with me. Before that, it was my two other best friends at some point. Ombre and Destin live with me. Oh, like, fire. before that, it was my other best friends from high school. Like, I house my family. I live in, like, a, a big space with everybody with me. And so, like, sometimes the gym is, like, the only time I get to just, like, plug in my headphones. Besides, like, driving in the car, sometimes I go take a drive. But the gym tends to be my only place that is, like... I just go in there and zone in. Even the studio is communal. You know, you have like your engineer and your yeah. producer and all that. So that gave me this meditative, like dolo little like escape to be able to just like do something that was good for me. And honestly, and anybody who's in the gym often also knows like you feel off when you don't go. So yeah, I love, love it. That. I gotta get to that point because I, I, you know, <laughs> I, I get in, I get out. Like I have the a hardest part and then is I build yeah. It. The hardest part, the hardest part is going, and then the second hardest part is when you realize you've hit a plateau, and you have to redesign your plan, your routine, routine, because you stop, you stop growing or stop, you know, you stop changing. So yeah, Lord, all right. Are you there? Is that where you're this, happening? This was inspiring. <laughs> I think like okay, I get up, I wake up. Okay. I feel like for me, being able to wake up early is a start then uh -huh. getting to the gym is yeah. another start uh -huh. but for me it's routine so i just do treadmill only but it's like not really enough you gotta go lift i know i'm just gotta lift i gotta you gotta lift heavy i think i need somebody to show me what the hell i'm doing because i be feeling silly i'm not gonna lie i feel silly in the gym you know i actually learned everything i know about the gym off tiktok what yeah Every single thing. I had a trainer for a second, and when I say a second, I literally mean one session. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I'm not really into being told what to do in the one time of my life that is only mine. Mm. And I just got on the internet and started learning. And there's, they be teaching me. Shout out all the fine fitness girlies I follow because <laughs> that's where I get it from. For that's real. fire. All right, I'm going to have to uh, tap into that. I got you. I'll send you the playlist. <laughs> Please do. So let's talk about what I want. I would say that's my second favorite. Tight. The flip is crazy. Thank you. Did Christina hear it? She did. She actually made a little video to it. Like the second the album came out, she already made a video. She's wow. been super supportive. That's fire. Yeah. I like what you did with that. Thank you. Talk to me about the messaging in that. Because I feel like for women, we're not really allowed to be that uh, yeah. vocal about what we want, what we yeah. don't want, what we like, what we don't like. Well, as a gay, I think we're different. I think. <laughs> I think we get to say whatever we want, whenever we want, and like as long as we resonate within our community, that's how I feel. Like, mm -hmm. I try to like, honestly, and I'm just gonna sound crazy when I say it, but I, if I could poof and I could just somehow end up in a world that was just lesbians, I mean, <laughs> que queer women, I just would because the way that we innately understand each other and mm -hmm. we like can speak in that way, there's, there's, there isn't much explanation, so like, that song to me just make perfect sense of like how we all speak like mm. it is very super sexual so i won't pin the super sexual on everybody but just just on some like fly shit and like some fun shit like we don't have many for us like we don't have many fly like shit talking like sexual like exciting songs that are like for us and by us so yeah. just wanted to get that one off no you you did that <laughs> thank you you did that um and then okay susia susia Susia. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jill Scott and Young Miko. First of all, I was looking at the collab. I see like, the Jill Scott behind your head. It's yo, great. Big Jilly fan. Same. But Young Miko was new to me. So yeah. I like this introduction. Oh, I think she's it's hard. a clash of two different worlds. Yeah. But I like how you did it because who could set the tone better than Jill? Oh, my God. Yeah. Freaky Auntie OG. <laughs> yeah. The OG is freak of all time. No, for real. Yeah. This, in my adult years going back and listening to this album, You're I'm like, like wow. Yo, who she... let me listen to this? This is <laughs> disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I love it. And personally, I think. The way it's sequenced is brilliant. The skits, the storytelling, like mm -hmm. the fact that I can listen to it 
you know, 20 years later, mm-hmm. it still has the same. Exactly. But what was it like working with Jill? It was a trip. Honestly, it was just Jill on the song before Young Miko. Like, she had a verse. And then I'm like, okay, the song is called Susia. And I love Miko. And if you think about it, me and Miko are kind of like each other in alternate universes. It's like, definitely given that. Literally. <laughs> she's the Latin world me, and I'm the American her. And when I hit her up, she was like, holy shit, I've been a fan for so long. And I'm like, I'm a fan. Like, what can we do? I sent her the song, and I thought, like, damn, how are we going to fit both of these people on this song? Because I really I, I don't know if anybody from either world is going to get the other. Mm. But I ended up, like, deconstructing Jill's verse because there's more to it. And, like, constructing an intro out of it and making it the intro. Mm. And at first, Jill was like, what the fuck happened in my verse? When I was like, trust me, it comes after a song called Eight. It makes perfect sense because the coochie eating song ends and then you say, I'm nasty. It's a layup. It, like, it really was. And then I sent her Eight and she got to hear it in sequence and she was like, holy shit, this is great. And mm-hmm. I was just like, it's all you, like you're a genius. And she's been super supportive. Like the second the album came out, she listened to it and she was like, this is crazy, blah, blah, blah. And like so many words of encouragement. And I'm a super fan, so... I'm just, I'm just stoked to have her. And Miko was like, I don't know who that is, but like, I'm fucking excited. <laughs> yeah. And then she heard it and loved it. And honestly, it's like the, it, it makes sense when you hear it. It yeah. really does. That's what I was like. No, the cla- the way you combine these worlds is crazy. I was shook. I'm, I was like, people are gonna see it on the track list and be like, what the, the fuck? Yo, literally, yeah. <laughs> literally. And then even Omale, especially after the year Omale had, I'm like, oh no, nah, she's wildin'. Yeah. Because that tour with the girl. And yeah. Then, but then the... Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. I remember that. And the, she brought her boyfriend or was yeah. it her fiance or something? Just her boyfriend. Just oh. her boyfriend. But anyway. It Honestly, was a I know how it is. I know how it is. If you, ha- you be doing that at concerts? I mean, I sing to people live and sometimes it doesn't always end well, so. Really? Yeah, there's definitely been some moments where like. Let me, let me find out Kalani out here ruining home. Oh tour. no, I will literally DM the partner and be like, I'm super sorry, it's just part of the show. I'm like, up. please, it's nothing. Like they're allowed to just be a fan. Like I have, I've definitely stitched some situations Well, that's good. Together. At least you do that. Yeah. I mean, it's that. part of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be crazy. See, that's why when the whole Usher Vegas oh, residency man. thing was happening, I'm like, I think the niggas just gotta give us a pass. It's fucking <laughs> Usher. It's- yeah, I think, like, it's been done for so long. Like, people getting brought on stage or sang to or, like, whatever. Ser- serenading is a part of R&B culture. It's a part of singing culture in general. Mm-hmm. Now... I wouldn't know what to do if my girl went on stage with her favorite rapper, and I'm like, I don't know. That's not Usher, though. I mean, if Megan Thee Stallion comes out and steals my girlfriend, I'm going to be super sad. If it's Megan, you might But that's have my homegirl, so yeah. I'll be like, wow, did you have to? But also, I might be like, wow, she's too fine for all of that. That's, like, fucked up. So maybe that's how boys feel about Usher. Prob, okay. All right. You know, is Meg my Usher? Is that what we're coming to? I can see that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> She's definitely there. She's yeah. there. Um, okay. And then talk about Groove Theory. It's the intro. When I first heard it, I literally thought it was about to be Tell Me. And then I'm like, oh, wait. This <laughs> Everybody is was like, different. we're getting a Groove Theory sample. I, like, I just knew. And then- nah, the song is <laughs> called Groove. And honestly, the way we put together the two part of it felt scientific, which is why it's Groove Theory. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I made the first half of it with this really brilliant artist named Mommy. She's incredible. You should check her out. She is not only an incredible, like, uh, instrumentalist and just, like, super genius crafter, but, like, her music that she drops is super incredible. And so we did that half, and then the second half I did with my boy Dixon, who I did a lot of stuff on this album with. He's super incredible. And when I heard... When we had the first half, I knew it had to have a second half. I just didn't know it was going to end up being that one because they came miles apart. Like, those mm-hmm. came at completely different times in the album process. Okay. And so we stitched it together, and it just made perfect sense to me. I didn't know it was going to be the intro, but when it was suggested to me by my A&R, she was like, look, I have a brilliant idea. Like, maybe let's put that as the intro. And I was like, I kind of would be geeked up if the first line I heard was, I'm not the one, and I'm kind of crazy. I would be ready for the rest of the album. I think so it I feel like, the yeah, I feel like it set a cool tone. I think so too. Talk about um, cause you, 
You took me international all over the world. We're in Africa. <laughs> we're in fucking South America. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden we get a country record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the fuck is this? But I actually really like it. There's no, yeah, thank whoever you. produced it, who's producing? His name is Oak. Oak Felder. He's done a lot of stuff on Sweet Sexy Savage, but he he did that. Originally, it was started by this guy, Louis Elastic, who does all of Destin's stuff. Mm. Him and Destin actually started this little, like, jumble version of Better Not uh, in, in the first week of making my album. And I finished it, and it was only an interlude. And it was just mm. these little, like, clicky sounds and a guitar. And then I was like, you know what, I've been thinking about this song a lot and I don't think I want to interlude, but it'd be really crazy if it was a country song because it sounds twangy. So then I took it to Oak, I had Oak reproduce it, and then I finished it as a country song. And it it took him telling me to to not be embarrassed as I sang it with a twang because it has an extra country twang as I'm singing it, but I had to really get out of my comfort zone to make myself do that, but I'm glad I did because it sounds (laughs) It sounds good. Thank you. That's funny. Okay, that's funny that he had to... To like chill. You're yeah, good. You're he in a good was pocket. like, he was like, just do it. He was like, do the vowels, change your voice. I was like, all right, let's fucking go. <laughs> nah, you ate. You really ate with this project. Thank you. I like the direction, but not to get into your catalog, but I have to because this is my first time interviewing. All you. right, let's do it all. So, the music soul child collab footsteps. Hey, oh, love, love, love that Thank record. You. Talk to me. You work with all the greats, and I I think that's what I love the most because I can just tell you're a fan of music, too, and it speaks to other people who are fans of music. But when that dropped, talk to me just about collaborating with him. Man, I mean, I referenced Music Soul Child on my first album. I quoted him, or my first project, I I quoted him on my second, and that might be reversed. I honestly can't remember. I was little. And he's my my favorite He's my favorite. He's just my favorite. He's in my top five. He always will be. He knows that. Like, he's one of the reasons I started making music. I didn't grow up on R&B. I grew up on Neo Soul. Mm -hmm. So I didn't discover R&B until I was already, like, nine or ten. But up until then, it was all Neo Soul. So music was, like, super large for me. Yeah. Um, I made the song, and I just remember being in the studio and being like, I'm going to take a, I'm going to risk it for the biscuit. And I'm going to DM <laughs> I'm going to DM him and just be like, listen, I adore you. And would you be down? And he was super down and sent the verse back. And, like, he's just sweet. He's honestly sweet. And he's a fan of music. So he keeps up with everyone. Yeah. He did something with Destin. Like, it's incredible. I am keep referencing Destin because it's, like, my close proximity. But, like, yeah. he... Music just he keeps up with what's going on. I'm sure he would collab with anybody who was a very large fan of him because he just appreciates people that appreciate him. So love that. I I love the music community. All right, another record I wanted to ask you about. Well, actually, Toxic. What what era? Because I feel like you you go in and out of toxicity. Yeah. With your albums. Yeah. But I feel like that one was like pinnacle toxic. You know, I was in a toxic situation. I was in a, a, a toxic, very public toxic relationship. And um, I just write true to where I'm at. Like, I didn't, I don't I don't really like to come out and just put my stuff on the internet. Like, there, there used to be a time of that when I was a lot younger, like 1920, where I would, like, put something out myself. I'd be tweeting heavier. I'd get on Instagram and be like, yeah, this is what's going on. And, and just, yeah. like, put my shit on blast. But if if I have the opportunity to put in the music, that's where I'll choose to speak about it. So Toxic just came from that. And I really was drinking a lot of Don Julio during that album. So <laughs> I think I say tequila like four times on that project. So Yeah. That's you know, it me and my friends are talking about it. We always go over albums like and then this and this. But mm. that's one thing we said. It's like it's literally a snapshot of just yeah. where you're at in yep. life. That was a drunk ass, heartbroken <laughs> turned up album for sure hey man we've all been there so (laughs) the soundtracks are for us too um and then what i even on this new project you did this i was gonna say with blue water road i really like the hip-hop elements you always include like there's always like a a reference production wise Mm -hmm. to it um is that you cooking that like, Honestly, it's my inspo? producers. I'll okay. never like take credit for what's not mine. The producers are incredible, and I, I'm I'm fortunate to be around really musical people who also grew up um, 
around very heavy musical influence. I yeah. I was really early managed and grew up by Tony, Tony, Tony. Like, they kind of raised me. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, my original manager is Dwayne Wiggins of Tony, 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 and I was in a band with his sons. So for six years, that was who taught me that was my reference. And the producers I had, so I'm assuming you're talking about... Uh, I wish I never, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Pop Wenzel. And Pop grew up around like the Soulquarians and also grew up in Philly with a lot of like really imperative R&B and hip hop, like super notorious you know, people like that. So it's cool to get to nerd out with people Hell yeah. who like have that obsession with like referencing shit that they love. No, it's great. I yeah. love all of it. I pick, or maybe I'm just nerdy with it, but I love that. Yeah, good. Um, but damn, Raphael Sadiq, I know you mentioned your top five. I'm curious to hear what your top five is, but Raphael Sadiq is definitely in my top yeah, five. Yeah, yeah. Right? On some musical genius, like, like F all the vocals even. Like, if we're just saying pure musicality, oh my God, Raphael Sadiq might be top two. Yeah. No bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Especially for the stuff that he's also just purely behind. I know. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Nice. My top five... I might fuck this up and like have to tweet about this later. <laughs> um, in no particular order either. Stevie Wonder, Music Soul Child. Oh, nice. Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, it's gonna be funny, but Switch, the group, pre like it was like the before DeBarge. Okay. I think it was before DeBarge. It was Switch before or after DeBarge? <laughs> like, I don't um, know either. Yeah, maybe just throw DeBarge in there. Um, Rye Carey. And then I'm going to go Lauren, just off off strength, off rip. Yeah. But yeah, Jill, exactly. Jill might also, she might be six. Yeah. Like, in the six. But those might jumble up all the time, depending on, I mean, like... Jill, Erica, and... Lauren are like the... Yeah, but then you have to add the four and it's in the IRE, which I think, why do people leave her out of that four? Because we always go Jill, Lauren, Erica, but then we forget India. But maybe it's because she never had a toxic run and everybody else got a little more like turnt and she <laughs> gave us like real like... She did. The whole time. She really did. But she's a, she's in there. She's in there. She's a part of that like... She is. Mount Rushmore. That's a good point. Yeah. I'm sorry, India. Yes, I'm just <laughs> She knows uh, I love her. I've seen her DMs all the time. Like, so how you doing? <laughs> Collab on the way. I hope so. Shit. Are we? Are you gonna do a deluxe for this album? You know, I feel different ways about deluxes. I. I am really anti stuff that very obviously feels like it's for the sales. Mm. And I feel like oftentimes this whole thing about I'm going to drop three different deluxes and continuations of an album just kind of fucks with the art. And I could be over-arting it, but something about deluxe is like, I just, it just feels obvious these days. It doesn't feel like I had more songs to give you. It feels like I want this also to chart and it contributes to the streaming. It's a smart move and it's a smart right, move. Right. And like, I don't know, but I am considering just going to the studio and making like a little six pack that's not attached to this project at all to just have because I don't tour till the fall and it's mm. barely summer, so. But, you know, you heard it here first at that point. Yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> shit. After hours, this project alone is going to get us through to the fall. But the only Thank reason you. why I brought up the deluxe is because I'm like, low-key would love to hear that Jill verse. The whole Jill verse. You know what? <laughs> I might lie. just drop, I might. I could just drop it. I'll see if she'll let me just, like, put it on the internet just because. yeah. Yeah, she smacked it. I, I think she could say fucking gibberish on a song and I would be just as geeked, so. Speak, yo, I really love when you rap. Thank you. Yeah, I know you, you dabble in and out of it. Definitely dabbling. <laughs> Do Definitely. you not like it? No, I love it. I think with the rapping, at the, man, it's the same way I feel about, like, directing and photography. Like, I do direct, and I, I can, and I do take photos, and I can, but I don't call myself either of those things because I respect it so much. I respect rap. I really respect rap to where, like, I would not ever just claim rapper, and I also wouldn't say, like, I be rapping. I would yeah. just be, like, sometimes I'm melodically, like... <laughs> say words in a little that different way. Yeah, yeah, just because I respect it so much. Like, I love it. That's what's up. There's a lot of people out here who rap who don't even respect it that much. <laughs> so it's kind of like... 
What I mean, shit, new genres. It's all these subgenres. I fuck with it, whatever. Yes, it is. Okay, now let's talk about motherhood and then being an artist at the same time. Yeah. How are you balancing that? It's hard. It's really hard. I think especially when you have to beat all of the things out of yourself that are standards that were created by society. Yeah. Um, my daughter's obsessed with my career. She she loves what I do. She loves supporting me. She loves coming to my job. She's every day, mommy, can I go to work? Absolutely. She comes to work with me. Aww. I think when you when you portray a version of motherhood that is on like it doesn't exist to certain people like there was times i had to explain to like my family like you guys got the opportunity to be stay-at-home moms or you got the opportunity to just have a like a set schedule mine doesn't look like that so i do have to take her to all these places with me or sometimes i can't take her to these places with me i think that it's been super interesting to navigate just understanding what being a good mother means without using society's definition to explain that. And then also, like, being famous is weird because you have to tell your kid they can't talk to strangers, but people know their your kid's name, yeah. you know, strangers, you know? And then deciding if you're going to allow your kid to be seen on the Internet or if you're going to allow your kid to just grow up completely separate from that. And there's just so many nuances, and I didn't have an example of what – being a mother look like in this way. So it's all new to me. Yeah. It's actually really cool and inspiring to see, though. Thank uh, you. You guys do that and balance it in the limelight. Like. Oh, man, she's the coolest kid in the world. <laughs> she's so cool, so it's easy. So what what did you decide on? Are you okay with her, like, or do you think when time comes she can have her own social media? Yeah, I think when the time comes, I think it's not even about, oh, I don't want her to see anything about herself or me. I think we... I truly believe time works in like science and, and seeing the effects of things work in timelines of like 20, 30 years. Like we we are just now seeing what the effects of growing up on a TV show for child stars are looking like when they're talking about it in their adulthood right now. Yeah. And we were watching them when we were kids and they were teenagers slash young adults. We won't see the effects of what putting a five-year-old on the internet in 2024 looks like until my kid is an adult to speak about it. Sure. We don't have the science to back it up, so I'm not going to subject her to something that I can't guarantee she'll be okay through during the end. I don't know what kind of support that's going to require, what type of mental health that's going to require, I mean yeah. mental health support that's going to require. I don't know how to facilitate that. There's no example. So I'd rather do it the way that ensured I had a safe childhood, which was just letting me be a kid. Yeah. I wasn't raised famous. I didn't have a bunch of eyes on me. I get embarrassed when my mom whips out fucking home videos and pictures of me to my friends that I do know. So I can't imagine to strangers yeah. like what my kid is going to grow up and be like, damn, he put me on the internet in my most vulnerable moments to strangers. So Yeah. No, that's yeah. a good point. I'm going to let her rock. She's rocking. Good. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious to see that, too. I think about that all the time. With a lot it's of a like trip. Kids, like... Baby influencers? For what? But some of them are the breadwinner, you know? Yeah, but, man, it's just like at what cost? Yeah. Like, at what cost? At what point does, does a kid grow up and decide, like, also when you make your child the breadwinner that creates this dynamic between the parent and the child where like all things can just fly past you because at the end of the day it's making the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't you don't exactly always put the the needs or what's best for the child at the forefront of the mind cuz you're like at the end of the day this is paying the bills. Yeah. Like it's just too many it's too many iffy things that like I just have never seen it done before in a proper way. So yeah. I'm gonna just keep her. I'm gonna keep her safe. People sometimes forget I have a kid because I don't post her so much. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, whatever you thought, she's living her best life. She's having a fucking fantastic life. She loves me. I love her. She's adored. She's well taken care of. Like that's, that's it. all that matters. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about um, cause I love to see you surfing. Thank I, you. I love that. I love watching you start that. Does she surf? No, she had a water scare. Okay. <laughs> she had a water scare in Hawaii, like, on my last tour when we ended the tour in Hawaii where we were in the west side and we got on the water and, like, my friend was holding her and it the just a, too big of a wave came yeah. and it, like, pushed her onto the shore. And now she's, like, super anti-ocean at the moment. But okay. I have hope. Yeah. <laughs> I have hope. I got hope. At least she'll get in with floaties now. But before, she wouldn't get in at all. Understandable. Yeah. Hell, I probably would be traumatized too. It's a tough one. Yeah, but I I love seeing you do that, and I I just 
I really enjoy watching you go through your journey of finding like your my solitude side quest. Or, oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But talk to me about surfing. How long did it take you to actually get good at it? Because I've done it a few times. It's and hard. I could do it with my knees bending. Yeah. But once I stand up, it's over. It's a real trust. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a real <laughs> trust in your body that you're like, I really think that's what it is. People always make it about balance, but I really think it's about trust. It's like, a, I'm going to plant myself here. Body, okay, you got this. Like, be fearless and just mm. stand on it. It's when you get up there and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. And then you yeah, start okay. blacking out and falling. But it maybe took me like three or four months of consistently surfing to feel like I, I was allowed to say I wasn't at the beach learning from my friend, but I we were actually just going to surf together. Okay. I do remember what that moment was when we like got out, we got dressed, we got in the water and we caught a couple waves and I was like, wait a minute, like, we're just going for a surf. Like, we're surfing with each other. Like, you're <laughs> not giving me tips. You're not telling me when the wave's coming. I can fully read the ocean. Like, I know what's going on. Like okay and now it's been a little over two years and i'm having a blast that's fire yeah, that's my favorite thing i'm so jealous i wish i looked by the ocean i really do <laughs> i mean rockaway has some really beautiful waves i don't know if that sounds crazy to you guys i know that's far but i do for the record everybody watching have some really incredible friends who surf in rockaway they're black surfers and they're on a mission to get more black people in the water and really? they do lessons and they also do skate lessons and they're incredible and if y'all want that i got it for y'all i used to live down the street from that beach but never went i don't know i don't trust new york beaches it's really good waves it's really warm water y'all actually don't have to have wetsuits we have to have wetsuits year round because our water is freezing y'all water is not freezing it's just mm. really um there's a lot of seaweed and y'all get baby jellyfish in the summer because it's like jellyfish birthing season, but they can't sting until they're adults. So you're good. I don't if you don't know mind, if I'm trying to... If you don't mind sticking your hand through some uh, some some mush here and there, then <laughs> you're okay. good. I personally love it. I'll Is be at Rockaway. mush from the jellyfish or from the seaweed? Kind of combination of both. Interesting. Is it like that episode of SpongeBob? Like it's a little jam? like slimy, but it's not like that all the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be good. You'll have fun. <laughs> Interesting. No, I'm going to have to tap in because I do... I like it and I, I'm nature obsessed. So. You'll have so much fun. My friends are great. All right. Um, okay, so on the show we play, oh, actually I have one more question. Mm -hmm. You're a heavy activist, always have been, and you took a stand um, during this... This genocide. Genocide that's yeah. happening, but what made you want to be forward-facing and actually participate in the rally? Um, I had an opportunity to be publicly pro-Palestine years ago, and when I posted it, uh, a bunch of Zionists responded and scared me out of it, and I didn't understand the weight of what that meant. I didn't understand that that meant that it was a testament to how strong Zionism is in our in our world. I didn't know that that meant to other people looking at me that you could be backed out of being humanitarian about just having a that that it's not political. That it's just caring about things that deserve to be cared about, basic human respect. Um, so it wasn't this conscious choice of like, I'm going to take the leap and be forward facing. I think, and I would hope that every single person on the earth, which we're seeing isn't true, but my, my wish for the world was that if there was any oppressed group of people who had their land taken, who have been displaced, and then who are being brutally murdered and attacked and tortured and starved and being made sick at the rate that Palestinians are, that we would all be up in arms. And we're seeing how many people care by how much Palestine has opened the door for us to be uh, educated about Sudan and educated about Congo and Yemen and Haiti and Kenya now, all these places that otherwise have, they've been slipping through the mud oh, oh, for causes that have been going on for almost longer than, than we can even fathom. Um, so again, it wasn't like a decision of like, oh, it's time to like, be an activist. I think I'm just the type of person who will, who will yell at about anything that I think is wrong. And I grew up in Oakland. I'm, I'm from the city where the Black Panthers are created. I, I slept outside in the encampments that occupy Oakland, like mm -hmm. as as a high schooler. So this isn't like a. This it's not isn't. An act. It's, not it's just not new. Yeah. It's not new, and that's not anything that's like a cool factor. It's just like it's who our city raises us to be. It's just it's just what we know. Like we're we're a very liberal, protest heavy city. Like we're just we don't play none of that. So I'm just fortunate to have been politically educated in like 
it, it, political education was integrated into the way that I was raised and like the city I grew up in. So it's, you know, it's just second nature. That's fire, actually. I think something about the West Coast, and I'm not even just referencing this moment, this incredible moment that Kendrick just had, but mm -hmm. just built different. Yeah. Like community wise. Yeah. I, I think like you don't see that anymore. <laughs> I think it's hard. I think. I think we've had our moments where it's been super divisive. Like, it took me growing up and leaving California to recognize that people see the Bay in L.A. as, like, one thing or just, like, dramatically closer than, like, we do because we have a lot of rivalry and we have a lot of, like, especially the Bay, like, if you move to L.A., like, you know what I mean? Because it's that we view L.A. as Hollywood versus there's a whole actual beautiful, like homegrown, like central, like from the people that are born and raised in L.A. And they're a beautiful people and they're a proud people. Yeah. And like we wasn't really super aware of that per se. I mean, I can only speak for myself. I wasn't aware of that until I moved to Los Angeles and like met these people and like been around them. But I think the unity is incredible because we're we're also known for so much gang culture. Yeah. And so to see that regardless of like the gang culture, that when it comes to holding all of us down in general, that we can come together to do that. Hell yeah. Yeah. What? Never seen nothing like that. Yeah, no, it's incredible. Super dope. And even down to the gang culture, like in a way it's healthy because it holds niggas accountable. Yeah. And like in a lot of cities there are no checks and balances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like I, I really respect that. Yeah. About the he West. did a thing. He yeah, did a thing. Yeah. But, all right, so we play this game called Questions That Need Answers. All you have to do is fill in the blank. Okay. The older I get, the less I give a fuck. <laughs> fuck. All right. You would never believe me if I told you that I can't burp. What? Yeah, I have something called non-burping syndrome. It really sucks. I was hoping that he wasn't picking up on the mic that, like, I'm having all these, like, grunts in my throat because I had sparkling water and like I can't burp so I just get these painful ass gurgles in my throat yeah it didn't Yo, that is nuts yeah my friend that's actually in the hallway right now is the only other person and a nail tech that I had once like is the only people I know in life that have this It's actually only got named a syndrome in the last like couple of years, people didn't believe it was a thing, but I've never burped in my life. Sprite, you drank Sprite and still I can do the Sprite challenge and it's just gonna cause me a bunch of pain, but no. I can't burp. Yeah, I'll gurgle though. The air will come out in these little bits of like these painful chest gurgles. But no. you. I'm a tomboy, you don't think I wanted to like burp my ABCs with everybody <laughs> when they were little and like all the fucking girls were competing with the guys to be cool as shit. And I'm like, damn, I actually fuck all y'all up if I knew how to do this, but I can't, like That's I can't, it doesn't work. That's nuts. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna have to Everybody's all up. drunk and they're like, just burp it out. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> it's so bad. All right. Um, I'm a little embarrassed by the fact that I know so little about. I don't know if I'm embarrassed about anything in this life. That I know so little about. Oh, I'm numerically dyslexic. So I'm going to say math by default. Mm. It's not that I know little. It's like I physically have a learning disability. So I cannot do numbers. And it is embarrassing. Mm. Like, I go to the restaurant, and they're like, how many for your table? And I'm like, oh, man. At the oh. restaurant? No, it's bad. I can't, I, like, I physically, I got fired from every job that I worked at, like, some type of cash register or dealing with, or, like, dealing with tips, because I would always give them the wrong money back. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, are you stealing? And I was like, absolutely not running cameras back, but I was just giving people too much fucking change back. Wow. I wish it was my cash year. Oh, bro. I go to tip and I'm like, I over tip because I'm scared I won't get the tip right. So I just put mad money down. Damn. Like, it's fucking bad. That is interesting as fuck. Yeah. Not necessarily a bad thing for the other people. Right, yeah. Listen, I, know <laughs> I can read really well and I can write. So there we go. Well, that's good. You, I do public speaking and I'm dyslexic with words and reading. Okay, well see, that's see, yeah. you are, you actually win. Yo. <laughs> My career doesn't involve numbers. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> People do that for me. That's funny. Okay, yeah, Sid, you can attest, I'd be fucking shit up. She'd be like, <laughs> Nyla, it's, it's not pronounced like that, I'm sorry. It's okay, yeah. we rock. There we go, aha, <laughs> uh -huh. me slap her. All right, let's see. Uh, sometimes I look back at my life and I'm exhausted. Mm. <laughs> no, I mean, that's also true. But I look back at my life and I actually can't believe 
that it's been the amount of things that it's been. Like I tried to start a book the other day because I wanted to write. I want to write a book, and I was like, I actually have lived too many lives. Like I think I've there's too. I wouldn't know which pocket to write about because there's been too many fucking different versions of this shit. Like yeah. I hope to be completely chilling by the time I'm 35 because if this is up until 29, I'm beat. Yeah, yeah. honestly. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, you're like, you know, I kind of can just do what I want. And you really can. I'm at that point. Which is pretty uncommon to be this young. Yeah. Yeah, young old. happy to be here, honestly. From time to time, it's good to. Damn, I'm such a tourist, bro. I just wanted to say go to sleep. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> From that... time to time, it's good to rest intentionally, I will say that. Okay. I think I didn't always understand intentional resting. I felt I used to have like when I first moved to LA, especially like a toxic grind mentality. Like, yeah, like I'm in the studio till the sun come up, and then like I'm back at this shit again. I'm just going to take a shower, and I'm back at this shit again. I'm gonna get a Red Bull, turn up, and then like that shit gets whooped out of you quick. Like, there's something really special about just like being in your space. It's super chill. Like. Give your body a break. Give your mind a break. Like, you need to recalibrate, so. Yeah. No, that's true. Um, I made a complete fool of myself when I blank. <laughs> I make a fool of myself all the time. <laughs> I'm a consistent fool of myself. Um, I would say all the times I defended myself on social media. Word. Yeah. Fuck that. That is so played. Yeah. I hate that. I mean... There's sometimes, like, I think obviously if, like, it's a defensive character or, like, you have to clear something up because someone has been hurt, I think that's different. But, like, talk about myself to strangers for what? Y'all don't know me. And it took me a long time to get there because I used to be yapping online. I used to be <laughs> every second somebody would say some shit and I'd be like, well, actually. Yeah. So it just took me a while to get here. Yeah. We're glad that you're here. Oh, thank real. God. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, my personality trait is. I don't know, probably mentioning that I'm a Taurus every second. I'd be like, my bad, y'all. I'm hungry. I'm a Taurus. Yeah, my bad. Like, it's a little quiet. I got a rest in bitch face. I'm just a Taurus. Like, I probably, <laughs> I probably actually, my personality trait is bringing up astrology all the time and probably doing everyone's chart whenever I go into anywhere. Yeah, like, I have mad random people's charts in my phone. Like. Okay, that is obsessive. Well, you know, I like to remember, I also have a best friend who, like, knows all their favorite artists, like, charts and stuff. So, like, we'll chat music when shit comes out. And then she'll be like, yeah, but you know, it's that Scorpio moon they got. That's why they be, <laughs> that's why that song is like that. I'm like, why do you know that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I feel that. And I love that. Um, all right. Last one is an ideal world would be blank. Man, an ideal world would be where everybody has their basic needs met. I, I, that would be my wish, like the world peace wish on some real shit. Like, I just feel like everything comes from people not having their basic needs met. And you trickle down to even crime and things that people do out of scarcity and people's not being able to follow their dreams down to just basic survival. Like, I, I just have an extreme, I'm super sensitive. Like, I'm I'm super sensitive, especially to like, just wrongdoings and injustice and unfair things and, and sad things. And I, I hurt walking down the street. Like I just, I'd be, I'd be walking down the street or if I don't have cash, like this new cashless ass society is so fucked because I, I used to notoriously just like, I would lose all my money. Even when I was like super broke when I was first coming up, like I, I would just, I'd be like, I don't know. I left the house, I had a hundred dollars. I came back, I don't have shit. Cause I didn't, I'd be like, oh my God, the whole time, you know? So. I don't know. In a perfect world, everybody would just have what the fuck they need. Man, what a good heart. I honestly. mean, I feel like most of us feel, I really, I really do. I feel like, hear me out. I feel like even the most greedy of people at the core became the most greedy of people because of they scarcity have, and because yeah. they felt like they had to like, scrounge and claw and get what they had and then they have to protect it so fiercely because they didn't have it before and now they're yeah. like now that I have it I can't give it to anybody else because I have to protect it and what about my future family and da 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 so yeah. like bottom line I think everybody having what they need would just cure everything yeah. and I think we hopefully all of us feel that way yeah hopefully. I love that yeah. man Kalani for fucking president please oh my god fuck the <laughs> <laughs> No, because honestly, I would never be the president. Oh my god, 
Honestly, fuck the government. I'm just gonna say that. Y'all oh, know, y'all yeah. know me by now. I'll just say it. You heard it here, fiftieth. Yeah. Yo, but we need advocates like that. We do, we do. Kaylani for Kaylani. Can I like? What is it? Cause you, you're so zen, like naturally. Am I zen? Yes. I'm a, I'm a Taurus. No, that is not a Taurus trait. <laughs> Is it not? We're a little dry until we're not. I feel like we get that a lot. We're kind of dry until we're turned. Hmm. And I'm not even really dry. I just kind of have, I, I guess it's the zen. That's kind of dry. I feel like it's zen. I, I'm not going to say dry because when you speak on things, I hear you loud and clear. But, okay. you, you are, <laughs> but it's like, it's hella centered. Oh, like, okay. It's not it like. It took a lot of work. Yeah. It took a lot of work. I wasn't always like this. I definitely used to be a lot more like emotionally imbalanced in a way where like if you would have sat across from me and said anything that would have like triggered whatever, I'd have been like emotional about it. But I think you just get to a point where like you're clear and concise on what needs to be said and you're clear and concise on what you mean. And you know no matter what, like you can stand on however people take it because you know what you meant. So Yeah. I love that. I love that for you. And even down to the... When I was saying I was nervous about you going mainstream, blah, blah, blah. But I think, like, at the end of the day, you resonate just because you stay true to you. Did you, like, take time away? Because I really don't, like, you was like, when you see David, you see me. But then you're like, actually, no, not really. I've definitely seen David He's more so than I see you. He's so fucking famous. So <laughs> he outside. I don't go anywhere. But it, was that, like, intentional? That I don't go anywhere? Mm-hmm. You know, man, I always say that, like, I was fortunate and very unfortunate to be re a very realistic young person. Like, I was almost, like, I always wish my whole life, like, I truly do believe ignorance is bliss. And I, like, mm -hmm. it is a plague to not be ignorant. Like, God bless, it's great for, like, you know, contributing great things to the world. But I really do wish I could be one of those people who could just go about life enjoying la, things la, and, yeah. like, not fucking thinking about the cause and effect of it every fucking second. But I'm just not. Like, I'm the person that, like, gets invited out to stuff and I'm like, that organization sucks. <laughs> and they're fucking terrible people. And you don't even want to be here. And this award doesn't even fucking mean anything. So why I'm here? <laughs> and what is this? And y'all don't even care. What are we here? Yeah. Like, it's, it is, it plagues me. I don't choose to be like this, I promise. Because there are moments where I force myself to get up and go to these things. And I'm like, you know what? They invited me. I'm an artist. I want to be here. I want to show face. And then I still get there. And I'm like, this why? is the fucking why? matrix. And mm -hmm. not like no it head is. ass shit. Not to be head ass because I can get taken so head ass but like it is just the plaguing ass thoughts of like I really identified what kind of life I want and what what joys in life really mean the most to me and I just prioritize those I would take a family beach day over an award show any day I will take a trip to go learn from people in another place and like sit in their family home or like sit and do this or whatever or like meeting a bunch of kids and let them you know let them tell me that they, what what my music did for them over any of those kinds of things any day just because i've identified that that's where the joy is and that's what real life is yeah so yeah that plagues me from going out so. damn man so okay but i do be at the club sometimes all yeah, the time no, actually no, no, yeah 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 you but do. i be with my friends creating those moments that i'm talking about yeah you know? yeah yeah I can't wait to see what this book is. Where did you did you find your starting point? No. Okay. <laughs> the book may never fucking come. I just have I've like you got to imagine the things that have happened publicly already feel like they're this timeline that's this long for people. People are like, "God, she's been through so much. There's all this." When I tell you that is this much of my life? Mm. That is this much. As much as I've yapped, I'm I'm quiet. <laughs> I've res I've re I have been private as much as I've shared, yeah. you know, and and I see things about myself all the time. I see all these little blogs and and all these little things where people speak and people speak for me and people say these things and I'm like, you guys don't know the half of it. Mm. So if the book, uh, do I just pick like a five year gap of my life and just say here's five years from this year to this year and even then that should be like a series. Mm. It's chaotic. Well. The download will come and you'll figure I'll out. Figure it out. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, figure it yeah. out. I'll figure it out. But I do think it would be cool for you to just, 
I think highlight the culture just because of like yeah. your genetic makeup versus your different experiences, where you've lived, mm-hmm. the friends you've made. Like that's four books. And honestly, like I feel that's like a, that is a series. You said that's four books. That's four books. Yo, you have no idea. My last year was two books. Damn. Yeah. Oh yeah. And but you haven't really been posting on social like that. So oh, I just even... I learned the I have a really good relationship with social media now. Okay. You only gotta know what you know, and I only have to yap about shit that deserves the yap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Political yap, music yap. You know. That's it though. Occasional personality points, but other than that, I'm gonna do all my shit with myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I respect it. We love the growth. We love Kalani. Thank you. Um, shout out to Graham. Let everybody know where they can follow you if they don't already. It's just Kalani everywhere. K-E-H-L-A-N-I. Y'all got it. Yeah, crash out now. Hey. Talk soon. <laughs>